Hello everyone. Today we have a very special guest with us, the All India Rank 57, Aditi Vashne. She has cracked the examination in her very first attempt. So let us welcome Aditi. Aditi, welcome to Vajiram and Ravi. Thank you so much. Yeah. So uh, uh, cracking the examination in the very first attempt in itself is a huge achievement. So how do you feel about it? You know, it really feels surreal. I mean, I have no words to describe about it. But yeah, my hard work like finally paid off and it just feels wonderful to be on the other side of the um, this journey. But it has been like, I'm still processing it. Uh, but yeah, it has been a beautiful moment. So people over here say that this examination is really tough. You need multiple years to crack this examination and you have done it in the first attempt. So basically you have sort of break, broken the myth over here. So like uh, that's a great achievement I think on your part. So uh, now take us th through those moments uh, when you saw your result, your name in the list, the holy PDF that you talk about. How was it? How did you search the roll number or you searched your name or something? Um, so uh, I still remember on the day of the result, I was. I mean, everyone was equally anxious about whether their name would be on the list or not. Yeah. And I was, I was actually uh, thinking that I might be out of the list. So uh, when you, when the results were declared, um, I got that PDF from the WhatsApp. I I couldn't even download it. I got it through WhatsApp, and I remember, I I had thought ki I would just look through my name up till hundred, and if I don't find it, I will just CTRLF, and um, would. I mean, would search for it, but then just see a PDF, and I could I could even resist, and I just searched for my name, right. and I got it at you know rank fifty seven, so I couldn't digest it at the first, so I deleted that PDF, I re-downloaded it for four times just to ensure that if it's it was just me, you know, rechecked with the roll number, so and by, when finally I had you know for the fifteen minutes I had processed that thing in my mind. And when that happened, you know, it was just a very beautiful moment. Yes, whom did you tell first? It was my mother. She was just there beside me. But I was doing all of this on my own. I didn't tell her, you know, the results have come. When I was completely sure, I told her. She was the first person with me. She was sitting beside. Yeah, so that has that would have been an absolutely marvelous moment over there. Absolutely, I can't forget that feeling. It's so how are you celebrating these days? Like what is going on in your daily routine? Apart from like obviously studies is not there, yeah. I hope. <laughs> Thankfully, they're not there. But yeah, I'm um, I'm meeting people. I'm catching up with the friends. Jinko I missed hua I'm meeting my relatives. It's just, uh, you know, I've had a very busy schedule because, you know, a lot of calls, texts are, are there. It's a, I mean, it's the most beautiful feeling when you, you know, connect with people whom you haven't connected with for past so many years and they congratulate you. It's it's really very beautiful. I can't really even describe. So were you preparing for the prelims this year? I or? was. Okay, so you were not expecting such a beautiful rank. I was not even expecting any rank. So. Okay. Uh, I mean, I was just hoping if I could just get into the list, but I was preparing for prelims because uh, if uh, I would not have cleared, I I was prepared to give the prelims this year. So it's basically a dream come true for you, and Definitely. you know, a lot of people who have given prelims this year are again seeing the dream which you are as of now. Yeah. So, uh, like many people uh, which have given the prelims this year, they are worried that should they start preparing for the mains examination or should they prepare again for the prelims because uh, did you see the prelims examination this year? I couldn't see the entire paper but I did see. Yeah, it was pretty tough uh, yeah, as compared was. to the other uh, years. Yeah, so they're confused like whether should they prepare for the mains or not. So what is your take on that? How should they utilize this period? I mean, this is the most um, anxious period even uh, from my experience. Last year, it was very, um, you know, I, I mean, you really... Uh, can't really predict if you will be in your prelims because CSAT is another mm. uh, thing which is getting difficult day by day. So I would suggest that, I mean, this is also what I did, that during this 15-20 period gap, 15 days uh, period gap. Before the results. Yeah, before the results come out, we can always work on our optional. Because right. covering GS again does not make sense. Yeah. Because up already itna tired ho jate ho, you're already burned out with that mm. subject. So I would either suggest ki take a break for about good break because you're already burnt out from you know studying for prelims back to back for the past two three months yeah. so taking a break is, is one thing and if you really want to study you can always go with the optional first because it's also i mean 
optional is a major part of your mains and also because you're already you've already covered gs for so many months that you're tired of it so optional might give you a fresh perspective into the preparation mm -hmm. so uh, either you know you can do this yeah. i did that right right no that's a really beautiful strategy i think because you get a break from your daily uh, study pattern and then you study your optionals Absolutely. wait and for optionals, the results you know there's there's already been a break before prelims you're not studying your optional so you kind of get a touch on it and also even if you i mean unfortunately if you do not qualify for prelims for the next year also you might be well prepared with your optional and your main subject yeah. so either ways Uh, it's good for you if you prepare with your optional first so basically one should go ahead and prepare for the mains despite yes. whatever the results are yes absolutely so uh, take us through the journey like how did you handle this mains the huge 1750 marks out of 2025 and you know preparing optionals managing between gs and optionals how did you do that like so i had um, made a you know different plan so i since i did my entire mains preparation during those 3 months so i took a very calculated approach Like I divided those three months in different phases. Mm -hmm. So for the fifteen months, which was before, uh, before results. results come out, came out, and uh, so what I what I did was, I completed my optionals first. Mm -hmm. Like I would make synoptic notes of my optional mm -hmm. during those fifteen days, and I would also cover GS because uh, wh when you come to means preparation, you need some short notes for yourself. So for entire GS and optional, I, I ensured that in the upcoming fifteen days. i would be through with the note making process okay. for the next 15 days i started with basic answer writing like doing 10 tests a day mm -hmm. when the results were uh, you know declared mm -hmm. so i started with answer writing after i had covered my notes and uh, i had done uh, two to three times i had revised them mm -hmm. so then i began with basic answer writing i went step by step during uh, mains preparation so uh, when i did those you know 10 tests a day gradually i began with writing 3 hr tests every day and by the time mains were approaching uh, it was only 15 days mm -hmm. i uh, took that entire you know uh, all the tests in a series according to the upsc plan like one day i would sit for sa another day i would sit for gs1 and 2 uh, as per the upsc timing so i did that okay so you talked about note making and answer writing in your uh, this thing so uh, take us through your notes like how did you make notes did you make the notes uh, in the first reading itself or you read multiple times and then you made notes uh how did you make short notes uh, tell us the like uh, so i had made uh, certain notes for prelims but they were prelims specific and yeah. you know me for mains you need different sort of notes you need more theoretical approach yeah. so uh, by then i had kept my syllabus with me mm -hmm. and for every topic mm -hmm. i would just ensure that this is the limited space mm -hmm. and i would write only limited content which is very important mm -hmm. so i made synoptic notes mm -hmm. with every topic there and with I I would limit myself. Okay, fine. Okay, in with this topic, I would only write limited things and very, and only keywords yeah. sort of a thing. Keywords and value addition. Yes. Because ultimately, you have to write just two fifty words Absolutely. answer. Absolutely, and you can't really so. read paragraphs. And because at the end of the day, when you're revising, I mean, just before your exam, you need you can't you know take entire book over there. Exactly. Yes. So uh, I would summarize everything in just one page, and I would leave some space. Um, I mean, I would do it on A4 size sheets. so i would leave some space because if i might get some value addition points examples yeah. so i would add on to it and uh, you know gradually those notes have improved yeah. over those 3 months period so this is how i okay. so regarding the value addition points that you talked about uh, like how in how, how much do you, did you use in your actual examination like as in in each and answer, each and every answers did you use five six data or like you limited your content how did you because there's a misconception that you have to use a lot of data examples yes. flow charts diagrams and everything so how did you manage that i mean um, so what i had i had this misconception too because when a lot of model answers used to be there and in recommendations you would you know you would be told that you know you can add this you can add that but it's practically impossible to write every sort of data that is available for that topic yeah. so i always ensure that i should have the basic content like if there's a topic on let's say water availability so i ensure that i had two basic facts mm -hmm. not more than that because it's practically impossible for you to know everything every sort of data and example and when you write a lot of examples and data I mean, it looks very factual yes. so i ensured that i would give basic minimum 4 5 points and along with examples mm -hmm. which was which would actually create uh, your answers really well i mean it would add value to it but 
not too many of it. So basically, yeah, having a few, few, four four, five ah, few yeah. data points for yes. each and every topic that you're reading yes. and compiling it in a and note. And it should be covered in my notes itself. So yes. I need not, you know, be looking for it everywhere. Right. And if I come across something else, so I would just add on to it. Also, uh, in answer writing, because it's a big buzzword, like answer writing you have to do for the mains examination. Yeah. Tell us, like, what is the right time to start? Because you have cleared the examination in the first attempt itself. So what is the right time to start the answer writing? Um, so... I had this misconception that, you know, before your prelims itself, you should be thorough with your means preparation. You should have already written a few tests and answer writing uh, is something that you should have begun before prelims. Yeah. But in my case, I couldn't do that. So, uh, and also there's a, another misconception that, you know, from day one, if you have completed your syllabus or not, just start with answer writing. Yeah. But I wouldn't suggest that because when I had started writing one or two answers before I completed with my notes or revision, I could write very poor answers and the feedback that I would get was very demotivating yeah. and I, I, I thought that I'm good for nothing, I, I can't write really good answers yeah. and uh, you know a lot of self-doubt came in. So I would suggest that only after you're done with your at least three to four revision, you should start with answer writing because uh, when a, questions comes, a question comes to you and you start writing them, you need to you know have that recalling ability. The more you're able to recall, yeah. the better you're able to write. Right, yeah. So when you don't have content, you can't really write. So I would suggest after you've done at least two to three times your revision, and then you should probably begin with your answer. So since uh, you were the student of the mains test series as well, yes. so tell us how did that test series help you improve your scores? As you said that initially you were writing poor answers, yes. and then gradually, obviously, you have ranked 57 over here. Mm -hmm. So how did that test series help you in uh, improving your scores? Uh, so with Vajiram, I had given uh, various test series, but with Vajiram, I found this one unique point. They would give you very detailed feedback. I mean, the feedback was really detailed that I would get here. And they would also, you know, appreciate, like if there's a, a good point, they would also appreciate with that. And I remember uh, in the main feedback, they would, they would always tell me that, uh, you know, you can, they had, I mean, one of the test papers I had uh, got, they had written that I can, you know, score probably the best uh, marks. So that was very encouraging and the, the the fact that it was very detailed, I could work on each and every point. Yeah. So it was uh, helpful for that self-analysis bit. And the model answers were, you know, they were not very factual as, you know, other, other model answers used to be there. So it was more on the lines of how a basic student can write. It was not something of a perfect answer that you would, you know, want to copy and you would get demotivated to look at. Yeah. So, so it, uh, like it matched the... It matched the level of uh, frequency of the student. Yeah, so the, so the student is not intimidated. Oh, yes. I have to write this kind this of an kind answer. Of an answer, this a kind modern of an answer, answer, which is, you know, a very perfect answer. Hmm. And uh, if you really, you know, you see all those model answers, which are very perfect. Yeah. So you get this uh, idea in your head that, you know... You are good yes, for nothing. <laughs> good for nothing. And, you know, you have to aim for that perfect answer. Yes. But there's nothing as such as a perfect answer. Here. So even the evaluation that you got, I think yes. that's, that got reflected in the marks. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, it did. So uh, tell us that uh, in the, like, let's go more in more depth into the answer writing. Uh, so people say that you have to prepare the introductions beforehand, conclusions beforehand. So did you uh, take that path? I did not because, I mean, there are certain topics that might get repeated, but uh, I mean, with UPSC uh, being dynamic every year, they always give you a new fresh question. And exactly. they always, I mean, they just never fail to surprise you. So I did not uh, choose to memorize certain pre-made pre introduction or conclusion because I thought that it was a, I thought, I mean, a, a lot of people used to do that. But uh, but I used to think he, uh, instead of doing that, I could just actually work on my notes and refining my answers as to how I can do better every day. Although there were certain points in my head that I can, I had certain pointers, okay, fine, I can use the five trillion economy wala point or something else and mm -hmm. so forth. So basic mind map was there, but I never, you know, prepared. So you had some type of introductions in your mind, ki, okay, yeah, fine. I, mean, I could, I had certain examples, like I could introduce if there was an answer on economy. So I could introduce the five billion, I mean, five trillion dollar goal. Yes. So just like that, in environment, I had, you know, uh, like Prime Minister Modi says, uh, life concept and panchamrit. Exactly. So those terms were always there because they were so catchy and they could be used anywhere if you're falling short of any word. 
so those things were there but i did not pre made anything so you made those uh, notes out of these uh, specific yes. things and then you used in your answers yes absolutely so uh, tell me something like uh, when you see a, see a question how do you break it into uh, headings and then you know exactly writing those uh, body points so how like uh, take us through the journey like how do you write the body of an answer so uh, i think i would just go through the question first and i would read it very thoroughly and it's very important that we do it and uh, usually uh, in upsc you always have you know many parts to the question like what where and how problem right. solutions right right so i would always you know, just mark the keywords and if there was a question um, on problems and solutions and what is it about so in the introduction itself i would use the definition approach mostly or i would just define what the concept is all about then whatever is asked in the question if they are talking about the problems i would directly give the heading and i would begin with points along with examples yeah. and i would highlight the examples in little more margin i would use a okay, margin okay so to improve the visibility yeah. of the points so i would i would begin from here uh, with a point and then uh, would use a little space and give my example mm -hmm. so that it's easily visible visible to the examiner yes and then i would just begin with the next part of the question and post that i would use a very organic conclusion which is going with the flow for example a forward looking approach as to you know if there are problems there are solutions and we have a very good way to go forward and we can do this that. so for many students who start answer writing they face this initial inertia you know that whether i'm yes. good at answer writing or not so do you think joining a test series or like should will help them or how should they go about handling this initial inertia that they have so even i had that inertia i didn't exactly. really want to you know look i didn't didn't want anyone to look at my answers because they were too bad according to me so what i did was i started with pyqs so i started with pyqs and i kept those sheets which are upsc like sheets answer writing sheets and i would uh, attempt those questions on my own so as i had mentioned ki i would do 10 questions per day so those were my own i would not you know send them for any evaluation i would analyze it on my own and once i was out of that inertia that okay fine now somebody else can see my answers and then probably it was a very 5 to 10 day process uh and uske baad i had started with you know sending my answers for evaluation right right okay so now now let's go into paper wise uh, strategy of yours so i find that you have got really good marks in your essay for yes. the, uh, with regard to this year it's a very good mark so tell us something about your essay strategy and how the essay test series helped you in that yes yeah, so uh, with respect to essay i would say uh, i taken the essay course over here and uh, uh, sir would give us a lot of good anecdotes a good a lot of good examples he would give us a compilation of that and he would also you know while in the in the classes he would also you know share a lot of good examples from his own life and a lot of anecdotes from the lives of great leaders so that would always stay with you even if you've forgotten what you read that was always that would always stay with you what you've heard so uh, with those anecdotes and the examples the compilation that he gave us i was able to you know at least start with start answer essay start your essay yes yeah so because i had nothing to really begin with yeah. and uh, but but when i came to you know when the questions were more on the lines of health education the the kind of conventional topics mm -hmm. i would st still score really good but with respect to philosophical essays i was you know considering very uh, you know very difficult so i was scoring very low so i was coming to this point only yes. because these days you see a uh, lot of upsc essays are only philosophical i mean Absolutely. seven out of eight topics will get philosophical and essays and i think in the times to come they're going to, uh, to be they're like they're only that. going yes. to be philosophical yes. so tell us so how I, did yeah, you solve so that philosophical essays matlab I, in the conventional topics i was scoring really really pretty well but with philosophical essays i was scoring consistently low like i i used to get marks at, uh, in the range of 90 to 100 which was really disheartening uh, and um, so i thought like what else to do so i realized uh, you know with essay and especially with the fact that philosophical essays are coming there is no one particular way of uh, writing essays now like there's always this standard way that is recommended that you know you can begin with a story an anecdote and end with the same so some people you know they they can't come up with a story they can't come up with an example right they have their own way of doing it so when you do that mechanical way of writing in a philosophical essay that becomes very monotonous and a person who is reading it will definitely come to know that you know it's some made up it's some made up, up, up kind of thing yeah so 
my only suggestion to myself and to others would always be that you know when you're approaching such an essay just you know let your mind wander to you know different topics get diversity in your i mean if if you're reading a topic and you you know you get an instant example in your head so for example i um, i attempted this question uh, you know there was a topic the choice one which came in river if you if you have a choice it does not have to be i mean i'm forgetting the uh, ship that harbor or something no, no, like no, that okay no there is another one no. okay. if you have a choice it, it does not need necessarily be a right one so okay, there was okay. this one okay. so i immediately got um, you know an an example of versely street and so many yeah, things yeah. but then i thought ki you know i should always have diversity in my mm-hmm. essay so what i focused more on is just diversity of different dimensions and just writing to the point because you really don't need to delve into deeper into those uh, dimensions and writing very in plain simple words because you really not do not need a very flowery language in essays mm-hmm. not everyone is a good poet or a good writer exactly and this intimidates people like people say ki you know we really don't have that background we have a technical background so we basically really we need to believe on our strengths yes. write as we write yes. and, and then simple plain words to the point as cover just many dimensions and i think you're good to go so uh, from the point you told that uh, multiple ideas would come to your mind how did you brainstorm uh, did you brainstorm before the essay uh, how did you go about writing the that essay yeah i think uh, when you when you read something if you're in a calm cool position and mindset you would get ideas yeah. but if you're in the pressure that okay i have to write an essay mm-hmm. you know those points would never come to you yeah. so first of all you need to just train your mind okay fine it's just a topic and you have to have a natural conversation with yourself as to what you're thinking about it yeah. so those top i mean those examples you know, you know would come to you the second approach that i followed was if i was really blank i was not getting any answers i would just uh, keep a keyword like social examples political multiple examples, dimensions yeah, dimensions yeah so i would think on those lines and examples would definitely come to me along with that so even in the philosophical essay you were able to apply yes. this uh, social political philosophical thing. essays um, you know religious scriptures could be re- really helpful okay. so i wrote an example from mahabharat uh, uh, in that same uh, topic the choice one so i had mentioned about the choices that were given to kauravas and pandavas yeah. and how did they you know choose between them so you can have so many sources that you can actually think on those lines so maybe we can have a database where you know we can write certain examples for ourselves and then we can probably pick and choose during our exam how did you um, bring flow in those points which were coming randomly to your mind <laughs> yeah so for the first 15 minutes before beginning with the essay i would just brainstorm with a pencil and uh, i would connect with different points and 15 minutes was a really good time to brainstorm and sometimes it used to happen that i i would get a lot of ad- more points than i had space to write so i would just be to the point and i would and i think it used to flow very normally so it used to flow normally writing, for you yeah once you start writing okay and just i think it it flows normally for everyone until unless you take the pressure of huh. you know that this is the pressure be which uh, puts you down yes it does Okay, so uh, like uh, there are other GS paper like GS one, two, three, and four. Uh, can you take us through the preparation of these papers specifically, like subjects like society people find it difficult, or you know governance portion? GS three you have multiple subjects. So how did you prepare uh, these specific subjects? So uh, with all, I think I, ha- I had a common uh, strategy for all the four subjects. Yeah. Which was to you know just. stick to each and every keyword that is mentioned in the syllabus mm-hmm. so i would just make those synoptic notes as i had just said mm-hmm. and um, i mean just adding on to those notes i would so was your strategy a little, little bit difficult for the gs4 paper because it has yeah, section a strategy, and yeah. case studies so um, so for the, the rest of the gs papers i did that and uh, the one thing which is very uh, important to do in the gs syllabus is that you need to interconnect points mm. because these days questions are becoming more interdisciplinary in nature and they expect us to connect science and technology with perhaps the impact on society so you know i would always uh, you know read all those notes together i would not categorize them gs1 gs2 and 3 4 okay. i would always read them in a flow so that if a question is interdisciplinary i could always attempt them in a more natural flow and write a natural answer yes. the organic answer yeah so because you know um, i had heard last year that uh, upsc had asked gs3 ka topic in, in gs1 GS yes 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 and it was 
really surprising to me because that question was very valid. It was asking the impact on socio-economic life. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they really expect us to come out of the box, you know, not categorize all the subjects paper-wise. Mm -hmm. So I tried to connect the dots and it's really important if you really need to add diversity in your answers. Mm -hmm. So that was one thing. And for ethics, I specifically uh, focused more on case studies because yeah. they have more weightage. So with case studies, uh, you know, they have, I always have a pattern huh. of, um, you know, appearing the kind of Keywords the topics, and, uh, that, topics they, that you uh, have, the uh, dilemmas that are there. Yes. Yeah. So I had made a database of all these keywords and uh, the dilemmas and topic wise. However, I, I had always kept certain original points with me. For example, with respect to women issues, what could be done? So uh, since I knew that these are the topics that are going to coming come in, up, there, huh? so I always Googled a lot of uh, brainstormed and I wrote certain points which were unique to me. So if those questions might come, I would add them. So case studies, I and what was more important in case studies, uh, you need to have a lot of practice because ethics paper is all about completing the paper in the first place. And this time the paper was, was really lengthy. lengthy yeah. <laughs> so in ethics, the main thing is that if you're able to complete the paper in time, that is more than you're, enough. You're done with it. <laughs> yes. And with respect to the, uh, I mean, the normal section A, I would, uh, I mean, I stuck to my uh, coaching notes and apart from that I had a good database of examples of you know different officers doing great work good examples of campaignings and uh, you know whatever good was happening in society so I would keep those examples in one place I would also read upon a, a, a little bit on different leaders that we have like Mahatma Gandhi Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam mm -hmm. and I would write certain values that they you know seem to uh, they follow yeah, yeah and certain great events that i mean they are associated with yes so i would keep that database with me and as and when and it was required, required then you would put that yes. in answer you would also use personal examples in the ethics paper or in, across the paper I did. okay fine yeah, I did. in fact in the final paper also i remember there was a question I would like to share one of the examples yeah, I'm or trying whatever to recall, but there was one question about uh, i think uh, uh, some mentorship or who played a very important role in your life so i wrote about my my teacher and uh, my mother. So I I did write personal, personal examples. examples. Yes. So basically, collecting these stories and anecdotes from newspaper. How how what role did newspaper play in your it entire is preparation? It's a very very important role. I mean, newspaper is something that you really can't. I mean, you just can't miss out on. Not even one day. And newspaper uh, worked in prelims as well as for mains. So for prelims. Uh, these days, there's a new trend of uh, questions coming from what this term means yeah, yeah. and uh, what conflicts are taking place and uh, map-based questions map -based from questions. international relations. And right. I remember, uh, you know, getting that some conscious memory. Uh, okay, I had read it somewhere. So that only came because of that newspaper uh, reading habit that I had. So it really works in favor in prelims. And for means, definitely you, you get to read what is actually happening in society. Mm -hmm. You actually understand what is the, you know, what is happening in India. So there are questions uh, which are coming more on, um, so let's say, science and technology. Science and technology, yes. So you know, work from home is going on. And um, so, for example, there were news about wind energy and the hybrid model hybrid projects. Energy. Yes, which appeared in the paper. Yes. And it was not really in the test series and so, so and so forth. But it came out of, you know, everyday news. So I, I remember there were so many questions which I could relate. Okay, this was in the news. This is, you know, I had read just a few days back. So that played a very, very important. So this must have been a good confidence booster also in the examination that you are uh, going to write answers to which you have already read. So like people will be curious because the way you are explaining and everything will be curious that how many tests did you write before your actual mains examination? Um, I don't really remember the count, but I had written a pretty 20, 30 tests. I mean, combining all the papers, including yeah. optional, I had written like 30 at the moment, I guess. So basically, three tests uh, per paper, yeah, I think there are seven papers or uh, three tests per It was more like, uh, you can do your answer writing practice, like I said, uh, 10 tests per day. But final paper, I had, I think, two, three is a good sweet spot. Okay, so you were into this daily answer writing uh, practice? Yes, you would do yes. uh, write 10 answers every day between yes. the prelims and mains? And uh, before like one month, uh, two mains, I would write at least one three-hour test every day. Mm -hmm. And before, I mean, two weeks before uh, the final paper, I would write two tests a day just to get accustomed to writing six hours every day on a two-hour break. 
So, so was yeah. time management also an, an issue for you uh, while completing the paper? Uh, it was initially. Uh, I couldn't complete the paper on time. It used to take me five hours at least to complete the paper. How did you overcome that? Yeah, but I think uh, the the better recalling power becomes. I mean, the more you've revised, oh, yeah. the better recalling you have. Uh, it eventually, with practice, it comes organically. You need not force it because if you take the load of that, you need to complete this paper in five minutes. Five minutes. If you keep that. clock is you know ticking uh, right now so under that pressure you're not able to do it so i just let that ideas come to me and i realized ki if i do not realize ki you know the clock is there so 5 minutes were more than sufficient for me to write but you know when that pressure comes into picture yes. like i said yes you know that becomes i i would spend more time on thinking, thinking ki you yeah. know time ja raha hai time ja raha hai and i would not be able to focus on the actual answer so but and this happened in my final mains uh, exams that uh, in one paper i think it was gs4 only that i could not complete it okay. because first of all it was lengthy it and it was very lengthy yeah, yes. and i came under the pressure ki you know i might not be able to complete it and that did happen that self fulfilling pro- prophecy okay so, yeah. so in gs4 uh, do you attempt case studies first or section a first how do you manage the time um, in my mocks i used to attempt uh, the case studies first but towards the end i realized that you know case studies would be more or less similar for everyone yes. and they would be writing more or less similar points because you really can't write anything else apart from the case so i thought that the scope for getting more marks was in section a in section a so i began with that but um, i think just because the paper was lengthy or i don't know what for reason i could not complete the gs4 i i left two questions i remember in section a in section a because i think this time the questions were also very ha even lengthy. the questions were lengthy like yes. five six lines questions otherwise i would be able to complete in my mocks but on that day i couldn't so basically even if you do not complete the paper you can get such good marks you can i think if you maintain the quality and quality of the answers matter. yes and uh, it's not really expected out of you that you write a very brilliant answer yeah. if you write an average above average answer and that is a good quality answer i think So you can get. And in other GS papers, like, did you attempt the ten markers first, or the fifteen markers first, or your mixed and match? Uh, What was your strategy? So I would attempt the fifteen markers first because they had more weightage, and you had to write more in that. So even if you, uh, you know, leave if if time management issue agar ho jaye, so if you leave one ten marker, it's still bearable as compared to fifteen markers. So. I would begin with the fifteen marker one. So this entire journey, you know, for most of the aspirants, it's really stressful. So, who was your stress buster? Who would you go to when you were in? You know, sometimes demotivation is there and everything. So, who was well, that? Demotivation is very natural. How did you handle that? Um, you know, since I believe that you know this exam is more, of, it's seventy percent stress handling and thirty percent is all about strategy because everyone knows what to read, how much to read, but that seventy percent is all that you have. How you perform on the final day of the exam, or how do you handle this entire journey? i for particular took a lot of stress i did and i was too hard on myself sometimes but i think any person should not do that uh, they should take optimum breaks and for me it was my mother and my support system my family because i was preparing from home so i always had my family they would recognize if i was feeling low so they would always cheer me up somehow and i maintained a good contact with my friends two three friends that i had and that inner circle that a person has they play a very important role in busting the stress as you said and whenever i would go down which would happen i think every alternate day so they would be you know they had my back that you know they would always support me no matter whatever i was going through so uh, let's say just one thing if you want to improve in your mains uh, preparation uh, now though you don't have to give the examination yeah. uh, thankfully so what would that one thing be like uh, that you would want to work more upon i think i would um, work more on the kind of examples that i write okay because, value addition yes, points because uh, i feel that more or less content would be similar for all the candidates because the sources have been same but what differentiates your answer with the other candidate is the kind of examples that you use the kind of uh, value addition that you do in terms of your ideas your solutions that you give so i would work on that and uh, secondly i would work more on um, you know time management and work under the pressure because the mocks that i used to write was relatively calm and composed posture as compared to the final d day and you see a lot of people around you so just getting accustomed to that 
that the day pressure and uh, I mean it, it's a different zone altogether. So I would like like to work on uh, how to handle that pressure and I mean stress buster of course. Right. So which is one thing. So that one message that you would like to give to all the students who are preparing and would be preparing. So what would that one message be? Uh, you know this is something that I learned really uh, late in my preparation and I would want to tell everyone that while you're learning from the toppers or you're looking at their answers or their strategies, just don't glorify them or just don't keep this that as a benchmark. Just learn from it as much as you can. Learn from their mistakes, but don't try to copy them. Like just don't keep it as a benchmark. Like, uh, like what I used to do was if I would look at any answer or any essay, I would try to copy that same style of writing. Yeah. But in that process, we forget that we are a unique personality and we have even better strengths. We might be good at something else. And which we might overlook if we try to glorify someone, some one particular person. So I would just suggest that in this process, you need to maintain that originality and creativity that you have. Don't be mechanical at any point of time. And once you do that, and secondly, that exam is so dynamic that you, you know, you can never know which person is performing really good. So don't be worried about the competition. Just compete with yourself every day and just get better improve upon yourself so i think that's much about it i think uh, students would have learned a lot from this session uh, thank you for being there aditi and uh, thank you and uh, all the best for your future endeavors thank you thank you <laughs>